Last time I spoke about the healing power of communities for individuals and societies as a whole. And today I like to share some thoughts about what actually gives communities the strength to support individuals and to have such a positive impact on society. And I think a big part for that plays uh, are playing rituals. So <laughs> in our community and in many other spiritual communities, rituals are an essential part of our daily life. So what if somebody does not understand the rituals or has hesitations or just doesn't practice well or has um, superstitious thoughts about them? So, for example, in my case, when I started attending rituals, pujas, empowerments and such, I had a superstitious thought about them. So I thought attending and then some blessing will come to me or automatic healing or transformation of some kind. <laughs> Of course, um, I was uh, paying to the external form of the ritual more attention than to the meaning of the ritual and to my own mind while attending a ritual. <laughs> or I also observed that some people, uh, and I heard it too in our community, who are newer um, residents or guests, um, who don't understand really um, some of the rituals we are doing here, who are confused, who find it too complex. And um, they don't see the meaning or purpose and the benefits of rituals. So therefore, I like to make a short attempt to speak a little bit about the uh, meaning and benefits of rituals. So in English, the word ritual comes from the Latin word ritualis, which means an, in a spiritual context, the prescribed order to performing of performing religious services. Yeah. So rituals are carefully chosen steps that have a purpose and can support our well-being and happiness, basically. So there are different types of rituals. As you know, yesterday we performed an anagarika ordination. That's a ritual. Before that, uh, or after that, we took um, some people took the refuge precepts. And the day before, we took the eight Mayana precepts. And then in the evening, we had Posada and the lay confession. And that day before, some people took an empowerment in the medicine Buddha. So these are some of the possible rituals. There are more, <laughs> such as novice and bhikshu, bhikshuni ordination, or making offerings on the altar, on the communal altar or individual altar. Then we have Vasa that we are living right now. Then we will do Pravarana, the confession after Vasa. Then we have Katina that comes later on, a thanking to the Sangha. And then we have fire pujas that we will perform tomorrow <laughs> and prepare today. And yeah, even dedications uh, can be a ritual. And then, of course, assisting uh, the, the sick and the dying and many, many other possibilities of rituals. So you see uh, community life is filled with rituals. And if you really don't have a feel for rituals, if you're doing it half-heartedly, you may have a problem living in community. <laughs> so I, I think rituals are deeply um, rooted in our, our human bones, so to say. So we can trace back rituals um, to 70,000 years ago. Yeah, in Botswana, in Africa, they found traces of rituals to um, um, an animal, a python. Or the oldest ritual traces in Europe are 30,000 years old. And then a little younger, uh, the Celtic practice rituals 2,700 years ago. And I want to um, share a little bit because they are very similar to what we are doing today. So the Celts, they actually saw individual trees as sacred, as well as um, uh, uh, rivers or springs, groves. They had um, village uh, gatherings there or rituals on, in those places. And their religious leaders were called Druids. And they were known for the great wisdom and knowledge to um, continue the tradition and therefore also made responsibility to lead rituals, um, to interpret events of nature, to 
um, prophesies the future and um, to provide medicinal uh, remedies or to make offerings so to ensure the continuation of the success of the communities. Rituals were also held in times of stress such as famine, droughts, floods uh, and war and also at specific times such as full and new moon. And you can see we are not far away from that. We are still um, on our sacred places um, we still have religious leaders who are performing rituals. We still benefit from their wisdom and knowledge. And um, for they are helping us to ensure the continued success of our communities. And we still perform rituals at times of stress, <laughs> such as pandemics. And um, also we perform rituals at uh, phases such as new moon and full moon, such as posada. So, but there's a big difference um, in ancient cultures, uh, such as what I mentioned, and our um, today's society. So in ancient cultures, or some of the Asian um, modern cultures who have Buddhist religion deeply ingrained uh, into their culture, the children <clears throat> grow up with um, uh, rituals from the early on. So they learn uh, what are sacred places. They learn to make offerings and dedications and prayers and such. But today's societies, what we learn is, <laughs> you know, uh, what is important is family life, is material gain. And um, yeah, it's uh, looking for solutions in technical developments, right, to make it short. So we are not as familiar with rituals. So no surprise that when we come into a community, um, we are kind of, what's that? You know, I don't understand. Um, it's not what we, what we know. So we have to learn. But if we are learning and getting familiar with, if we are learning the purposes, the meaning, um, the benefits of rituals, uh, then we will more and more wholeheartedly approach uh, rituals, attend rituals, and perform rituals. So some of the purposes, for example, of a Guru Puja, Lama Shepa, uh, are to connect and strengthening the relationship with our teachers and with the lineage holders, and <clears throat> to practice gratitude and generosity, and to remind us of our and everybody else's Buddha nature, um, to remember what's actually important in life, um, to receive wisdom teachings and um, to protect the Dharma and to promote it further and to dedicate, to share the merit with all sentient beings. These are just some uh, of the purposes. And then uh, since we are doing medicine um, retreat and pujas, um, the benefits or purposes are here to heal, to forgive or to support healing, support forgiving, um, to practice love, compassion, wisdom, and of course then to support those who are dying. And then in general further benefits are, um, they offer ways, ritual offer ways to channel our emotions in um, beneficial ways. For example, when we perform a medicine puja, and um, when somebody is dying during a funeral, right, we, we may tend to be very emotional, but prayers help us to channel our emotions in a certain beneficial way. Then they also structure and bring orientation to ourselves, such as um, we had people taking um, refuge and precepts. So that helps to structure our day, to make meaningful um, approaches in our life. Or oh, ordination, <laughs> very um, uh, important step. And uh, then also they provide a sense of belonging. Yeah, So we take refuge in the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. We belong to a tradition and uh, to a group of practitioners, Yeah, for example, when we take refuge. So um, to have a successful ritual, uh, in a sense that it supports us practitioners in our practice, we need to look at our intention and <clears throat> to perform the ritual wholeheartedly. Um, um, we have, if we have hesitations, uh, such as what I mentioned, if we are reluctant, um, the ritual will not be successful. So imagine, um, you know, like we did two days ago, we take the eight Mayana precepts and you're in the middle of taking the precepts and um, you're thinking about actually, oh, the suffering of yourself. Yeah, the hunger you will experience in the next 24 hours and the lack of music and the lack of dance and joy, you know, the lack of um, going shopping or whatever. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so the ritual was not successful. 
yeah, um, the purpose of benefiting sentient being was not successful. You thought about your own individual suffering, uh, you think, you may have. So in summary, it's very important to keep in mind our intention, the purpose and meaning of rituals. Otherwise, um, we are, are risking that the ritual will be empty and um, it will be purely an external action. Yeah, uh, We are not transforming our mind while doing the ritual. And um, yeah, uh, if you do the ritual with that uh, approach, with the right intention, right focus, then it will bring us closer to the realization of the Dharma and um, strengthen the whole community and has benefit to the whole society. Thank you.